Hi, I'm Phoebe Satmari. Having the house to myself for a week. One. It is not torture to assemble appliances with her. I read the instructions, lining up short and long screws, spiked and non-spiked nuts, washers, black and silver, plastic snaps, and things without names as far as I'm concerned. It does not bother me when she asks, are you sure at every instruction? I am sure. I am very sure. Two, our dog's long ears are flopped upward as he naps on our couch, but I know he's your dog and that's your couch. I've been meeting with an imaginary divorce lawyer, Frank, dividing our assets, but it doesn't help. Remember, we're happy. He seems to think we can work this out. Three, this is the difference between the empirical sciences of action. I am sure and she is not, yet nothing is true subjectively or meaningfully when love is complicitous with that leftover screw. Ode on Mania for Marianne Moore. Up in her Bronte-esque attic, she slept on her mattress in the middle of the floor next to her blazing heater. Her clothing hung on makeshift racks and her drawing desk was by the window. She built that drawing desk in college like Jesus and in it were years of pastel creations, rivers and floating eyes, skies and tortured tree trunks, snakes and triangles, triangles are aggressive. Upon yellow legal pads in cur cursive, she recorded the truth. She sewed and baked and soaked up Beethoven's piano sonatas. She sang and danced and darted across streets, read the Bible and whipped us. Uprooted in dreams, I walked up two stories to Ma who wrapped me in her arms and didn't fall asleep. She was there until she wasn't the whirlwind of love I had known. When Fire Island became Fire Island. In Sayville, contorted oaks and maples stretch over the house-lined streets and lead to calm open water. The shore is blanketed by the bay and the delicate slither of an island, a whaler's frontier. Before the hunters, it was Sikdom Haki, the land of the Sikatog tribes, then the Seal Islands, then Great South Island, and finally Fire Island, immortalizing the friendly luring fires of pirates. Blubber gold drew salt-crusted ships to this glacier-deposited place, so teeming with movement. And then they stopped coming. The empty ocean stopped cooing their kind, and there was nothing left to surround and scare and beach, nothing left to impale with barbed and chained spears. The wind-tilted frontier was left behind, and what they didn't want became our place to hide. Outside LaGuardia's Delta Terminal at dusk. The Indian man swings his yellow plastic bag as if it were a happy child. The overweight flight attendant sucks on her green strawed reliable frappuccino. The businessman sighs, loosens his tie, and slumps into cell phone pose. Yes, all of these things remind me of him in that none of them are him. I'm sitting in my car at the airport, waiting and watching everyone go somewhere, home, away. They are focused. And all I can see is his shirt, that blue hatch dress shirt I wanted to wear. 
It's on the indigo woman chopping gum as she waits for the shuttle. On the woad couple talking loudly and not looking at each other. On the man with the limp and the coal tar cigarette too far inside his mouth to be from around here. The Wake on Fire Island. I'm running along the water line, that point where shells crack underfoot, where my rum-soaked chest rises and falls, where the wind is at my back. The ocean is aqua blue today. No storms have churned its underbelly. No darkness has risen along with the abrupt horseshoe crabs and the afternoon tide. Yet, the young couple on the ferry were in love, kissing each other with a momentum that makes the rest of us intruders. We know they have made love, and we know they are soon to do it again. It is as inevitable as the next wave is in collapsing into the sand. Phoneme meets phoneme, an allegory. I like to imagine the birth of language, that moment of recognition between two hunched over, grunting and filthy beings. Were they naked? Was it springtime with berries beginning to show their buds and green sprouting up everywhere as if to let out a great sigh? Was it the sigh that created their sounds? I can see that he and she or she and she or he and he wanted to be folded into each other's arms and a stippling of involuntary sensation carved a slow stream that up ahead would become rapids, a roar of release, a chorus of surfaces touching surfaces and they realized they would be forced to stand still and listen. Thank you.